Hello everyone, this is Ron Wilkerson with Houston Professional Photography. Today I want to talk to you guys um, about a subject that most photographers probably try to overlook or don't take as serious as they should. And that is, in this situation, taking seriously into consideration what the client is truly asking for. Yes, we love the fact that we can create these amazing images, you know, whether it's you know, for boudoir photography or if it's going to be for, you know, something like, um, you know, modeling portfolios, you know, whatever it is that we shoot, you know, we want to uh, really show off our skill set. And I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, most of us spent many an hour, you know, learning different styles of photography, learning different techniques of lighting, as well as Photoshop techniques, you know, for cleaning up the skin you know, making people look just their best, you know, their best selves as we, as we can look at it from that perspective. But in some situations, we will encounter an individual who is not interested in the glamour side of photography. They're looking at it more from a documentary side of things. And uh, one of the clients that I had here recently, um, she has such a long story and, you know, we were able to talk for quite a bit before uh, her shoot. And she's going through a number of things. And yes, I do have permission to uh, talk about her uh, story as well as show her images. And one of the things that is going on in her world is that she's uh, fighting cancer and it's breast cancer. So it's a good chance that she's going to lose either one or both of her breasts. And, you know, for any woman, that's a very tragic thing. That is a very horrible thing to have to consider. But, you know, for many people in the world, this is just their lives. It's things that they've had to endure. And what she wanted to do is to capture images of herself um, with her breast still intact and not do the traditional boudoir photography shoot where there's a lot of makeup and hair and you know these unique poses and things like that. She wanted to show more of the real her. Now, with that in mind, I was able to, you know, capture a number of different images of just her, you know, being her. Now, again, she's not a model. She has no, you know, desire to be a model. She doesn't want to be portrayed as one or anything like that. So what I'm going to show you really quick here is just some very simple poses that I was able to capture. And even though the photos that she received, they're numerous, and the ones that she did receive um, did reflect what she was looking for. But at the same time, I wanted to give her something that was just a little bit more glamorous without going too far outside of the realm of what it was that she was seeking. So my main focus was capturing the images that she wanted to be captured. Um, due to the nudity in some of those photos, I can't show them in this video um, because some of this may get posted on YouTube or something like that, and we don't want the strikes. But I am able to show you some of the uh, other ones that, you know, just very simple poses that you can get the, um, get your angles. And I have to tell you guys, um, this was shot in a hotel room. The hotel room had two beds. It's a very, very small room. And to be able to light this room, it was extremely dark. It almost felt like I was shooting inside of a cave. So to get lighting exactly where I needed it was, was a challenge. I mean, there was literally no floor space whatsoever. So I had to become very inventive, you know, as far as bouncing light and things like that. But I was able to get it done. Now, if you look at these images, you know, from the raw state, they're very dark, you know, but because we shoot in raw, you know, we're able to bring back a lot of the, um, uh, we, you know, we can, you know, adjust the contrast, the brightness, the saturation, all of those things, you know, and if you're shooting raw, you know, as a photographer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, that's a blessing for us that we can recover um, a lot of this stuff. Now, again, like I said before, you know, she was not interested in doing anything glamorous, you know, so there was absolutely no makeup whatsoever. Um, you know, other than the fact that, you know, maybe she was wearing, you know, some lotion or something like that. That was pretty much it. So 
when I would approach one of these images, you know, just to give her something a little bit more on the glamorous side for herself, you know, just to have that one or two images additional, usually what I would do is I would go in and just do basically the same uh, editing that I would do in any, you know, for any other photo, you know. So I would take that image into Photoshop and I'm just going to walk you through it really simply what I would do. Um, you know, to edit the photo for her, to get it ready for her to see it. Now, in many cases, I've had this um, happen to me, you know, where someone will say, I really just want to look like me. I don't want anything, you know, changed about me. And I understand that. And that's, that's a given. So the things that we do not remove or should not remove is anything that is going to be on the person all the time you know so whether it's a mole or a scar or something like that you should not remove those things unless you know the client asks you to now in this photo you know her hair is a little you know disjointed here on her uh, around her back usually what I would do is just go in and remove some of these flyaway hairs but as far as the shape of the hair I won't focus on that too much because again like I said we're trying not to over glamorize this so a really simple approach to this would be to just soften the skin and maybe do a little bit of liquefying, you know, because the robe is, you know, in, in you know, certain areas. You could focus on removing wrinkles or something like that, but I don't think that's going to have that much of an impact. So let's start off with something really, really simple. So we would go into one of our filters and this is just also to increase your, your the speed of the workflow. So what you want to be able to do is to go in and look at the image and say, okay, what is it that I really want to adjust in this image? I just want the skin to be just a, you know, a tad bit softer. Uh, some of these plugins can really do the job literally just you know, right away and you'll see the difference. So if you're looking at this image now, if I click on it, that's before and that's after. And all we really did was lighten the skin and remove just a few you know, little imperfections that may be in the skin or something like that. If you notice the eyes are bright, things like that. So, you know, you can take it a step further, you know, where we'll do something like, you know, slightly slim the face. So if you look at the before and the after, now that may be too much. So I would stick with, you know, the first preset. Now there's a number of others here and you can go in in most of these apps and you can customize this as much as you want to, meaning that you can apply the same airbrushing to the entire body. You can enhance the eyes, you can soften the skin. There's just so many different things that you could do here within this application. But uh, for what we're doing here, all we're trying to do is just give it a slightly more glamorous look without going too far in altering uh, her everyday appearance. So that's my goal with this specific image. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is that yes you can do these things. Again, is it necessary? No it's not. But sometimes you may just want to show a person you know where you can go with the image without going too far. So I'm gonna just go in here and I'm going to adjust a few other things just slightly. I'm just going to give her a little bit more curvature in her back. I'm going to reduce um, some of the up uh, material from the robe and just bring in a few of the little areas where I can tuck those in. And I'm not altering the body. I'm just, you know, really just messing with more of her wardrobe right now. And I can bring the hair out just a touch, you know, little things like that just to give it a little bit more volume and maybe curve out the cheeks just a little bit not too much okay bring that wrist down just a tad bit and now we can go into the face if we chose to and we can do slight alterations without going too far so i can bring in her jawline just a little bit because i could, I could tell from the beginning she was a little nervous I can, you know, adjust the smile just a touch. If I wanted to increase her eye size, I could do that or reduce the nose or something like that. But none of those things am I going to adjust. I'm just showing you that they can be done, but it doesn't mean necessarily you should do that. So the basic um, liquefying that we did, we're just going to apply that. So now if we go into our history, you can see the before and after. Um, let's go get our history tab. And you can see that's before and that's after. 
And it's not a major difference. It's just, you know, very simple things. And I mean, you know, this is an image that you may at some point decide you want to make into a black and white. That could be a cool thing. You know, we can look at that really quick. So let's say if we were going to go in and turn this specific image into a black and white, um, I would usually pick uh, one of the apps that I use all the time, you know, to do something like that. And let's just jump over into the black and white presets and see what we get. Now, always when you're doing, you're choosing black and white, you have to take into consideration if the person is going to be um, printing this image or if, for instance, it's just going to be for the web. And if you can see here, let me make this a little bit larger. So right here, this is very contrasty. This is more airy. You know, it's just very light and airy. You know, everything is uh, very low contrast, almost to a high key. You could take it, you know, even higher than that if you decided you wanted to. But I think on the average, I want to keep the contrast. I want it to look, um, you know, you know, rich as far as, you know, the, the contrast in the image. You know, the jacket, the light whiteness of the um, comforter that's on the bed, and then even, you know, the headboard that's back here. Since it's a dark color, you want it to stay, you know, dark pretty much. So we'll just go ahead and choose that. And we're going to apply that and we'll be able to see a before and after of that. And that's what it looks like in a black and white. So this would be the color and that would be black and white, simply enough. So let's just save both of these. So we're going to first save it as a black and white. Give it a few seconds and then we'll turn off the black and white and then we'll save it as a color. And that's pretty much it. So the advantage this gives us is that we're able to um, look at those different images and see, you know, you know, see exactly what it is the client um, would be able to see. And then that way you can present that to them and say, hey, here's some options. And usually what I do is I will edit <clears throat> maybe one or two images, you know, the way I edit. And then I give them the choice to say if this is something they want, if that's too much or not enough, or you know, to even give me some feedback. Now, one of the things that I have started doing here recently is that I've been able to, with some clients, um, do like a Zoom type meeting where they can actually watch me edit a photo and they can give me suggestions while I'm doing the initial edit. And that will give me my baseline you know, as to what they want in the future for all the other images. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to do this video really quick. You know, if it will help someone who's looking for a boudoir photographer or not sure exactly what it is they want. And these are things that you can ask your photographer. If it's not, you know, myself that you're hiring as a photographer and you want to be able to say, hey, you know, this is something that I'm interested in or this is something that I'm concerned about. You can bring those things up to the photographer and let them know this is exactly, you know, where my goals set and this is what I expect from my deliverables. All right, guys, this has been Ron Wilkerson with Houston Professional Photography. I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, peace. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.